So this is the NetBeans IDE. Uh, that is uh, what we can say. We can write the C, C++ Java programs. And so right side of this uh, panel, so there is an editor, so we can type the programs. And on the left side, uh, we can view the projects. So when we create the projects, we can view the projects along with the packages, folders, and all. So for example, if I open this uh, file, so what I have written. So this is the uh, example.java. Um, so when you look at this program, actually, first line of the program says uh, package, OK? Uh, for time being, let us not worry about this word, uh, the sentence package, Java application, underscore sample, uh, and all. Uh, we will start uh, understanding by the uh, class sentence, that is the sentence class statement called class. And even uh, when I showed the program in the document, the public keyword was not present with the class. This also will explain in packages chapter only. Okay, now if we consider this program, so if I execute this file, say for example, I, if I right click on the, the file example.java, so we have we have the option called as run file. Okay, so when I click on the run file. So it will execute. So program starts executing here. Okay, you just observe here. So the word welcome is displayed on the console. Okay, so this the bottom part of the screen is called as console. So here it is printed welcome. And it says even build successful total time once again. So it will take it will tell you time once. Here, if you observe, the word welcome is printed, and after that, some information is printed about the execution part. Okay. Now, if I want to uh, print it separately, that is, welcome in one sentence and this uh, information about the program in another sentence. So, in the program, we, are, we need to add ln, print ln. Okay. That is, uh, ln means next line. Now, once you edit, once you edit the program, you will save the program. Okay. So, once you save the program, you can execute the program once again. So, run the file. Yes, you can observe here. See, welcome word is printed. After that, information of the program, the program execution is printed uh, in the next line. So, because we have used ln, that is print ln. Okay. Now, as we discussed in the second program, so if I uh, execute that program, so let me copy and uh, execute it. So in just a few minutes, we can execute that. Okay. So let me copy this program, or else just we can copy uh, the contents of the main program. Now we'll execute this program. So if you observe here, this is num, so that is printed. Okay. Uh, actually, the value of number is hundred only. Uh, so I have written ten plus ten, so it is combined. So if I would, if I remove this the value ten, so it will print only the value hundred. So that hundred is treated as string here. Okay. Okay, so this is num 100 and then system dot order print. Next function I used as print, not print ln, it is only print. So only whatever the things present in the next line, so that will be printed in the same line. So that means here we have two print functions, right? It doesn't mean that uh, two sentences should be printed, two lines should be printed in the output because for the first print function I'm not using ln. So this num value will, uh, will be displayed on the same line. So if you observe here, the value of num is and the value of num into 2 is 200. So it is displayed in one line. That means two print functions we have in the program. Uh, the messages or the values of the two print functions is printed on the same line. So I'm going to use the ln. Okay. If I use the ln for the last print function, okay. So whatever the information is present here, build successful, that will be printed on the next line. Okay. So, Okay, so this is the output of the program. So the, the bottom part of the screen is called console and the top portion is editor. So on the left side, we have the panel where we can look at the programs, projects, along with the packages and all. Okay.
Okay, now we will move for the explanation part. Okay. <clears throat> So this is all about the chapter uh, that is overview of Java. So now we'll move to the next chapter. Next chapter is data types and variables. Okay. So we know that in programming languages, we have to use data types because when we supply data for the computer, see definition of computer again, computer is an electronic machine that accepts input data. When it accepts the data from the external world, it will ask for the type of the data because if we can type integer values, we can type floating point values like 2.25, or we can type capital letters, small letters, symbols, whatever we want, we can type from the keyboard. But all are not of same type, right? So if I type whole numbers from 0 to 9, it is treated as integers. If I type real numbers like 2.25, 5.25, it is treated as real numbers. And if I type some symbols, it is treated as characters. So all are of different types. So we have to learn about the data. So data type is nothing but the type of the value. Okay. So in Java, if we consider the simple types, that is primitive or basic, basic types. So Java defines eight simple types, that is elemental types. In C++ and C program, or in any, any programming language, uh, three main data types are the basic types. Basic types are called as primitive, derived types and user defined types okay user defined types means which are created by the user basic types means which are not created by the user which are already present inside the software itself okay so only they are calling it as primitive see this primitive word meaning of this primitive word is like whenever some things are manufactured when products are manufactured which comes along with the system which comes along with the machine that is called primitive in case of software also when softwares are developed which comes along with the software that is original thing, that is called primitive, that we cannot change. Like in vehicles, if you consider the engine, engine part of the vehicle, that comes along with the engine, uh, along with the vehicle. So that is primitive, we can consider. In data types also, we have primitive data types. That data types we cannot change, we cannot create, we, can mod we cannot modify also. So as it is, we have to use. Only thing is, we should know how to use. Or what are the properties of primitive types, that we should know. So Java defines eight simple or elemental types that is byte, short, int, long, chr, float, double, and boolean. These are the eight types. These are put into four groups. So if we consider integers category, byte, short, int, and long are put into integer category. Uh, when we consider floating point numbers, float and double are put into floating point numbers, and a character, character set like letters and numbers. See here, the meaning of character, generally uh, what, uh, mistake we do while understanding the word character. Uh, we will consider like only alphabets A to Z or symbols. It's not like that. Character meaning digits, symbols, and letters. Three categories we have to consider. Digits, symbols, and letters. That is capital letters and uh, small letters. All the categories will come in character part of it. The way how we write, it matters. If I write digit five without single quotes, it is treated as integer. If I write with single quotes, it is treated as character. If you write with the double quotes, it, it, it is treated as string. Same number five. If you write without single quotes, integer. With single quotes, character. With the double quotes, it is treated as string. Like that. Okay. Next, boolean. So boolean to represent true and false values. So that is in the previous chapter we have discussed. Uh, that is true and false values are defined in Java. For that, we have to use the data type called as boolean. Okay. Next, the simple types represent single values, not complex objects. Uh, see here, uh, when we consider the object-oriented programming language, especially Java, in Java, even though they say everything is an object concept, but primitive types are not objects that we have to understand. That means, uh, for example, if we have byte, byte word, byte word is not a class, short word is not a class, int word is not a class. If it is a class, then we can say object concept. If it is not a class, then it is, it is not object. So they are telling the simple types represent Single values, not complex objects. So in classes and objects, I will tell you in detail about object concept. Okay. So all simple uh, data types or basic data types are not objects. So in Java, simple types are not objects. So uh, when, whenever we are using simple types, it is not object-oriented concept. Okay. Next, coming to the integers part of data type in Java. Okay. <clears throat> 
in Java, int is always 32 bits, regardless of the particular platform. Uh, why we have to tell the sentences like in C and C++, an integer can occupy 16 bits or 32 bits, depending on the platform, depending on the uh, what we can say, compile them. Okay. So in some systems, uh, uh, that is 2 bytes, that is 16 bits. In some systems, 32 bits, that is 4 bytes for int data. But in Java, int is always 32 bits, that is 4 bytes of memory, regardless of the uh, particular platform. Byte, 8 bit type, that is 1 byte. So 8 bits makes 1 byte. Example of declaring byte variables, you just observe here. Byte is the data type, B and C are the variables. See, for this, you have to remember the syntax. Okay, this is the general syntax. Like, you know, we should remember for all. When we declare class and objects also, there also we should remember. That is data type. Okay. Uh, instead of calling variable, uh, particularly in general, we can call it as identifier. Data type identifier. So this syntax we have to remember. So this syntax we have to remember wherever we declare the variables, identifiers, classes, objects. Okay. So in class and objects also, we come across this syntax. Right. Next. Short, um, short, it is a 16 bit type, two bytes. Example, you just see short, yes, short, t. Again, data type, variable name. Okay. Then coming to the int, 32 bit type. Examples are int a, int b. Okay. Long, uh, long data type occupies 62, 64 bits, okay, 8 bytes. So, example for declaring long data type is long days, long seconds, long distance. Okay. This is all about integer data type okay in int we have byte sort int and long okay now coming to the float floating point numbers okay so in float we have two data types float data type double data type in float this is for example if we declare the variable of type float 32 bits of storage that is four bytes so example float high high is an identifier low is an identifier so we can say these are the variables okay Double occupies 64 bits of storage, 8 bits. Example for declaring double variables are double by double radius. Okay, this is all about integer and floating point uh, numbers. Okay, now coming to the character. So, character is a little bit different in Java. So, we will see what exactly it is. Okay, okay. Uh, CHIR in Java is not the same as CHIR in C and C. See what they are telling you character data type CHIR. Uh, it is not same as C and C++. Why? Because, see, in Java, it uses Unicode to represent characters. Unicode defines fully international character set that can represent all of the characters found in all human languages. So this is the definition of Unicode. Unicode defines a fully international character set that can represent all of the characters found in all human languages. See, in Java, CHIR is a 16-bit type, that is 2 bytes. So in C, C and C++, it is one bit, uh, sorry, eight bit type, eight bits, that is one byte. But in Java, it is 16 bit type, 16 bits means two bytes. So the range of character is zero to six, five, five, three, five. Okay. So we will see one program in this. Okay. Uh, particularly for a character data dip, uh, there is a program because for intern float, it's easy to understand, uh, much similar to C and C++. We will see in Java what happens here. Okay. Now, if you consider this program, I have taken two variables, ch1 and ch2. ch1 is equal to 88, ch2 is equal to, I have written in single quotes, y. See, whenever you want to represent characters, you have to put in single quotation marks. If you want to represent it as a string, double quotation marks, okay? Next, system.print ch1 and ch2. As you know, whatever we write in double quotes, it will print as it is on the console. So if you look at this output, so CH1 and CH2, so uh, those two uh, words are printed as it is here. Next, coming to the next line, okay. Uh, see here what I have written, CH1, okay, then um, space CH2. See here what happens, even though CH1 and CH2 variables belongs to character data type, when we put in print function or println function, it is treated as a string. This is common. When we put anything in print or println function, it will be treated as a string. So only plus a symbol is required. Plus a symbol uh, after CH1 and after double quotation marks. What happens here is first CH1, this is one string. And this is the second string, whatever I have given blank space. And this is the third string, CH2. So, uh, for CH1, we are combining this string that is blank space, and for this blank space, again, I'm combining CH2. Okay, see the value of CH1 is actually 88, right? 
here it, what happens it will consider the ascii value so 88 is treated as uh, ascii value so for ascii value equivalent character is x here okay for ascii value equivalent character is x so it is printed as x instead of printing 88 is it is printed as x and why it is a character so it is printed as it is so why is a character it is printed as it is yes So CH one takes the uh, value of eighty eight. That is eighty eight is an ASCII value. So uh, for ASCII value eighty eight, the equivalent character is X. And why it is present in character itself? So it is printing as it is. Okay. So uh, the output is CH one and CH two X comma Y. Okay. So there is some explanation here. Okay. In the above program, CH one is assigned the value eighty eight, which is the ASCII. That is Unicode value. That corresponds to the letter X. So for each character on the keyboard, we have the ASCII values. For example, for digit zero forty eight, for one it is forty nine like that. For small letter E ninety seven, for capitalator E sixty five like that. Okay. Similarly, for capitalator X it is eighty eight. So because eighty eight is an ASCII value of X, so it is printed as X. And Y will be printed as as it is. Okay. Now coming to the Boolean data, we will see about the Boolean data. Okay. <clears throat> So Boolean indicates true or false values. So data type is Boolean. Uh, we will see this program how it works. So Boolean is the data type. I have taken uh, variable B. So B is equals to false. When we take the variables of type Boolean, only two values we can assign, either true or false. Okay, I have assigned. Initially I have assigned false, and it is printed as it is. Okay, without any change. That is B is false. Next, I have assigned the value true for the B. I have changed the value. Initially it was false. Now I changed the So that also printed as it is. Uh, next, in the next line, we will come to know uh, what is the functionality of this. That is, if I write if B, okay, just concentrate on this sentence. If I write if B, this what happens here is now this will be converted as like if of the value of B will be considered here. The value of B here is say initially it was false. Second time when I change, it has become true. So in the if condition, it is substituted in this way, like this. If true, instead of B, it is substituted as true. So it will replace uh, true. The word true will come here. So now, if I say if true, so this condition is true. I hope you people remember the concept of if conditions from C and C plus plus. So this uh, total condition will be true. Okay, condition is true. So in case of if condition. If the condition is true, statement immediately following the condition will be executed. So that is the statement. What is that statement? System dot auto print tells this is executed. So uh, the message is, itself is like that. So this statement will print because the condition is true. Next, next if I change the value, b is equal to false. Same, similar to the previous one. Here what happens? It will be substituted like this. If of false. So in this way it is substituted. If it is substituted like this, now what we can consider here is total condition is false. See why I am mentioning this word total condition because uh, sometimes we will come across uh, the conditions like this. Uh, for example, if right, if a greater than b and uh, c less than d, if we write like this, what happens? If the first condition is true and if the second condition is false, or either way, if first condition is false, second condition is true, then we cannot. Uh, Finally, decide what is the uh, uh, what value of total condition. Unless and until we know the properties of this logical operator, how logical operator works. Okay, so only I am mentioning total condition. What happens here? So here, uh, if I tell you, if of true, uh, whether if I, uh, whether we can whether we should consider the condition is true or false, we cannot tell them because simply the word true is there. We cannot say it is true. If I write like this, if of, if I use this symbol, uh, not if not true. Then it makes confusion for us. Why? Because in the in the condition I have written true, yes, but symbol what I have written not. The property of not operator is it will change the value. That means if it is true, it will change to false. If it is true, it, it will change to sorry. If it is true, it will change to false. If it is false, it will change to true. So we cannot say what is the total condition. Unless and until we know the property of not operator. So here there is no not operator. So directly I can say total condition is true. So in the next line, so total condition is false. So if the condition is false, statement immediately following the condition will not execute. So that we know in C and C in C plus plus 
or C language, we came to know that um, working of if condition, if the condition is false, statement immediately follows is not executed. So this is not executed. The statement itself we are telling this is not executed. So that is not printed on the screen. Okay. So till here we will observe the output. Okay. So there is one more line, print LM function, and explain about that. So till there we will look at the output, what it is printed. Uh, you see, first sentence is B is false. Yes, we have the print function, print LM function, B is false. See, this false word is a Boolean value. When it is applied to the print print ln or print function, it is treated as string, and that string should be combined with the string b is. So we have to write plus symbol. So why we have to write plus symbol in print or print ln function is whatever we uh, supply for the print or print ln function, it is treated as string. So if the if there is one more string already present, that should be combined. If there is no string, then no need to write plus. For example, if I want to print only false value, I would have written like this. Okay. If there is no string, then if the string is not present, uh, prefix or precede, then we will not write plus symbol. If we, we, we will not write plus symbol. Yes, we can write directly. Because it is present, the string is present before B. So we have to add plus symbol. So B is false. In the next line, it prints B is true. Next, when we come to the condition, if B, value of B is true. So if the condition is true, this is executed. Yes, it is true. Next. If the B is false, so if the condition is false, this is not executed. If you observe in the output, so this the message this is not executed is not appeared in, on the output. Okay. Uh, next we see. See, you just look at this sentence. This is executed 10 greater than 9. Yes, up to here it is printed as it is. You just observe the output. Up to here it is printed as it is. This is executed 10 greater than 9. It is. Next we see. We have written plus symbol. Okay. Uh, here what happened? 10 greater than 9 is there. So what happens? It will evaluate 10 greater than 9. It's just like asking a question like, is 10 greater than 9? Is 10 greater than 9? Yes. If the answer is yes, true. So first it will substitute here true in the entire thing that is 10 greater than 9. It, it will be converted to true because 10 greater than 9, the value of 10 greater than 9 is true. So it becomes like this. So only on the output it prints true. I hope you people got it. So you just rewrote the comment here. Out, outcome of a relational operator is a Boolean variable, or we can say Boolean value. Outcome of a relational operator means a relational operator is greater than symbol. So greater than symbol is the relational operator. Outcome of the relational operator is always Boolean value. Greater than, less than, greater than equals to, less than equals to, equals to, not equals to. These are the six relational operators. Outcome of all these relational operators, that is, result of all these relational operators, is a Boolean value. That is either true or false. So 10 greater than 9 is true. So here, uh, for 10 greater than 9, we get the result as true. That true is stated as string equivalent. That is combined with this is executed. 10 means greater than 10 greater than 9 is. So it will print true. Okay. I hope you people got this concept. So whenever we consider relational operator, the result of relational operator will be always Boolean value. That is either true or false. In system loaded print ln function, we get the value of 10 greater than 9 is true. That true is combined with this entire string that is this is executed 10 greater than 9. So we are getting this is executed 10 greater than 9 is true. Okay. See, uh, some explanation they have given about the program. So we will see what is that explanation. Okay. In the above program, <coughs> Boolean variable is sufficient by itself to control an if statement. Uh, there is no need to write an if statement like this. See, wherever we have if b, if uh, if b, that is uh, b value is true, we need not write if b is equals to true. So if b is equals to true, it is nothing but writing like this in program. If I write if b, if b is nothing but if b is equals to true. So only they are telling we need not write if, if b equals to true. We can write only if b. So uh, Boolean value is sufficient to control the if condition. Next, the outcome of relational operators such as greater than is a Boolean value. So the expression 10 greater than 9, 9 displays the value true. Further, the extra set of parentheses around 10 greater than 9 is necessary because less operator has higher precedence than greater than operator. See, this uh, statement is very important here. Why? Because, see, we are using two operators here. One is plus, one is greater than symbol. We know plus is used to add the value and plus is used to combine the value. Two, two, two functionalities is there for plus. One is to add. If I say 5 plus 5, it will print 10. But if you use same plus symbol in print function or print ln function, it will not add, it will combine. If suppose, if I remove this parenthesis, what happens, we will see. Ah, here we get an error because 
uh, see this much, this part is treated as string, right? Okay. Now we have two symbols, plus and return symbol. Now we get a question. That means compiler will get a question or interpreter. Which one to be evaluated first? That is whether plus operator or greater than operator. Because plus operator has got higher precedence than greater than symbol. That means arithmetic operators have got higher precedence than relational operator. So if that is the case, if I say plus operator has got higher precedence than a relational operator, then plus will operate first. If plus operates first, what happens? 10 will be combined with this two. Okay. So it should print, this is executed instead of printing true, it should print 10. Okay. After 10, there is a greater than symbol. So here it is a confusion. Greater than symbol means actually 10 greater than 9 should be evaluated. Because 10 is already combined with uh, string, this greater than 9 will be left out separately. So we get an error. If suppose if I write like this, 10 plus 9. Okay, what happens here is it will not add. Again, it will not add. 10 plus 9 is not added. Instead of that, 9 will be combined with the 10. So we get 109. Okay. That means whenever we want to add or do any operations in the println function, compulsory we need the parentheses because plus will be having higher precedence than the other operators, that is relational operators and logical operators. So here we are using greater than symbol, which is a relational operator and which has got uh, less precedence, less priority than plus. So we need to put parentheses. When parentheses are put, uh, from mathematics only we know, uh, that is board mass rule, brackets, uh, division, multiplication, addition, subtraction. So brackets, that means parentheses will be having higher precedence than all the operators. So whatever things present in parentheses, first it evaluates. Okay, then plus operator will do its job. So if, para, if the things in parentheses starts working, then 10 greater than 9, uh, it will be evaluated. If 10 greater than 9 is evaluated, then 10 greater than 9 is true. Then this true word will be combined with string. This, this is executed, 10 is greater than 9. Is. Then there will be no problem. So particularly in this example program, so if we miss adding parentheses, we get a error. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so before we go to the next topic, if you have any doubts, you can ask. Okay. Now we'll move to the scope and lifetime of uh, variables. Okay. Okay. So Java allows variables to be declared within any block. A block is a code term within opening and closing curly brace, or we can say braces. So here, for example, uh, if we consider uh, functions, okay, so generally what we do, we write the function name, then in the next line, we start with the opening uh, brace, okay, and after the end of the function, we put a closing brace. So these are called as braces. So for a set of brackets, we have to just remember the technical terms, parenthesis, braces, brackets. So parenthesis means like uh, into bracket of mathematics, okay, braces are nothing but the flower brackets, and brackets are nothing but just square brackets of uh, mathematics. Yeah. So here, when we write the opening brace, it is nothing but we are starting a block. Block. When we close the opening brace, that is the end of the block. Okay. So when whenever we write the block, a block defines a scope. So here, scope means it is a region uh, within which we can use the variables, variables or functions, whatever it is. Okay. Scope is a region. Uh, we can say span, like lifespan. Here we can say scope. It is a region where we can use the uh, variables. Okay. Each time uh, you start a new block, you are creating a new scope. Two major scopes in uh, other computer languages are local and global. That means apart from Java, if we consider C and C++, we have local and global scope. Uh, when we define variables as a local scope, those variables are called as local variables. When we define variables as a global scope, those variables are called as global variables. In case of C and C++, if we define variables within the function, for example, in the main function, if I define the variable, so this variable is called as a local variable in case of C and C++. And if we define variables outside all the functions, that means above the main function, if I define like this, uh, say for example, in the, uh, B, so this B is stated as global variable. Okay, so from variables declared above all the functions, it is treated as global variable. Variable declared within the function, it is treated as local variable. So in case of C and C++. But when it comes to Java, but in Java, two major scopes are scope defined by a class and scope defined by a method. 
Okay, there are two spokes here. Instead of calling local and global, they have said it as spoke defined by a class, spoke defined by the method. That means variables declared within the class, variables declared within the method. Okay. So for scope defined by a class, we will uh, look into the classes and objects chapter. So there we can discuss about scope defined by the class. Now we will move to the scope defined by the method. Okay. okay. <clears throat> so here the meaning of method is nothing but a functions. In C, C++, we will call it as a functions. In case of Java, we will call it as a uh, methods. Okay. Methods begin with an opening curly brace. If that method has parameter, they too are included within the methods scope. Uh, variables declared inside the scope are not visible. That is accessible to code that is defined outside the scope. Scopes can be nested. For example, each time you create a uh, block of code, you are creating a new nested scope. This means the, that objects declared in the outer scope will be visible to the code within the inner scope. So the reverse is not true. So this is best explained in this program. So I will tell you. Um, okay. So to understand nested scope, consider the following program. So uh, sorry, in the below program, it is the line y is equals to 10 is commented out. If you remove the leading comment line and file time error will occur. So we will see this program. So how we can understand the uh, uh, scope defined by the method. Okay. Okay. See, just the class name is a scope. Okay. Uh, in this program, uh, just I will uh, tell you overview of this program. So, in the next class, we will discuss in detail. Okay. Uh, so, within five minutes, uh, within two minutes, I will complete this overview of the program. In the next class, we will discuss in detail. Okay. So, in x, so this is a variable. You just observe what we have done. Uh, x variable is declared within the main function, but uh, but it is not declared with an if condition. That is, uh, this is the starting of the if condition. Start a new scope. It is not declared within the if condition, but it is declared within the function. Next, coming to the y variable, it is declared within the function, within the if condition, but it is not declared. Uh, that is within the main function. Actually, it is present in within the main function itself, but in the new scope, it is present. Y is equals to twenty. So if you look at the comments, you will come to know. See, the variable x can be used within entire function. That is, within the if condition also you can use. Outside the if condition also you, you can use. So only the comment is known to all blocks within main. Uh, how many blocks you create in the main function? In all the blocks, x can be used. Coming to the way, y variable, we can use only within the if condition. That is, opening brace of if condition and the closing brace of if condition. So you see the comment uh, y is equals to 20 known only to this scope. That is, to this block means within opening brace of if condition and closing brace of if condition. If you try to use outside, see y is equals to 100. Here uh, y is not known here because the variable y uh, declaration we have done within the if condition. If we have declared outside the if condition, that is within the main function, then we would have used outside the if condition like this. Declaration matters. That means where you use the data type and variable, that line is considered as declaration. So we have declared within the if condition. So we should use within the if condition. That is opening brace of if condition and closing brace of if condition. So if you try to use outside, we'll get an error. But for x, it is not like that. So x can be used within the main function. And again, if you come within the if condition also, see here x is equals to y in 2. Here also we can use within the if condition. And outside the if condition also, we can use one more time. So x is known before the if condition, inside the if condition, and outside the if condition. The meaning of that is within entire main function, we can use the variable x. But for y, we cannot use outside the if condition. Okay. So remaining things we will continue in the next class. Just uh, one and a half minute is there uh, to terminate. Uh, before that, if you have any doubts, you can ask. So in detail of this program, again, once again, we will see in the next class. So I will execute this program and I will show you. Okay. <coughs>